Good day, folks. It's DIY Guy123 here. Today I'm bringing you another do it yourself video. Nice little tool I've got here. It's an OBD2 scan tool made by X Tool. It's a D7. I just got it oh, a couple of weeks ago and I've been playing around with it. And this is the first opportunity I actually needed for something. This vehicle belonged to a relative of mine. They said uh, they were driving along and the check engine light, that one right there, started, uh, started to either it came on or started to flash. I don't know which. They weren't sure what the problem was and were kind of nervous to drive it. And so in general, if the check engine light comes on and stays on, it's you should have it checked by by someone, but it's still generally OK to drive. But if the check engine light flashes, then it's to be shut off immediately um, and, you know, basically towed to a mechanic shop. So that's what I understand in general about vehicles. I can't speak specifically for this Yaris, but those comments are, are good uh, guidelines for a lot of vehicles. So uh, to actually get to the bottom of this, I have my scan tool and the cable that plugs into the scan tools on this end and then plugged into the OBD2 port. It's just above and to the left of the brake pedal and it's underneath the dash right there. In this vehicle, it's actually a white connector and you just shove your OBD2 cable on there and away we go. So uh, this is the first video in a series of videos I'll probably be doing with this tool because uh, I've i never had a fancy scan tool like this one and it's, uh, it's pretty nice. So it's got an auto scan option and what it's doing right now is it's it's communicating with the car, the vehicle's computer trying to learn details about the computer and, and then it's going to be saying, hey, how do I uh, investigate further? So it's asking me, is this a Toyota or a Lexus? It is a Toyota Yaris. So I moved to a shadier spot, so hopefully the screen is more visible to you. And so it's uh, asking me, okay, is this a European, other North American, Japan car? Well, I'll pick a North American version of this Toyota. And this one, I don't believe has tire pressure sensors, so I'll pick without tire pressure. And here it tells me, oh, so I guess it's a 2018. It says 2018 Yaris. It says it's got the 1NZ-FE engine. And I will click OK on that, and it's now ready to do a scan. So when you click, click Automatic Scan, it scans through many of the systems that are on this car. And it does take a while. Some vehicles take longer than others because there are more modules in some vehicles than others. Um, this one... This one has 13 systems, so engine, an ECT, cruise control, ABS, traction control, and various systems. Um, if you look on the right-hand side, it shows the failures, the systems with failures. And we have failures with engine and ECT, cruise control, uh, main body, and navigation system. So a bunch of stuff that seems to be going wrong. But the one that turned this check engine light on would have been an engine and, uh, and ECT error let's see what this says so i picked that module and i'm going to click diagnose and it tells me here in addition to controlling the automatic transmission this ecu can also control fuel injection ignition timing not control engine idle speed self-diagnostics backup and special backup function in special environments so i'm going to read the trouble code and it's telling me several codes here this p0441 is a is a code related to the evap system and P0455 is a gross leak of EVAP emission control system. Um, and then we have others as well. Now we have trouble code status being current. So that means, you know, at the last time the vehicle was running or the last time this test was run, these codes were a problem. Then we also have status of pending. And I believe that means that the computer thinks there's a problem, but it, the incident that made it think that wasn't strong enough for it to go. There's a definite problem. So... I suspect that it, you know, if the issue happens multiple times, the status would change from pending to current. And as you can see, there's P0441 as a status of pending and P0441 as a status of current. So you can bet your bet yourself that's a that's a legitimate error. Same thing with P0455 pending. Um, the issue of P01604 stability malfunction being a current, we have one of those in history as well. And so, uh, in, in this case, and very often, this car, oh, how many kilometers in this car? 60,000 kilometers, maybe? Um, no, that's not right. Hang on. 78,000 kilometers. Well, uh, you know, it's only five years old, four years old, and uh, low mi relatively low mileage on it. I don't suspect the fuel lines have rotted off 
or that they've ruptured. And so the most likely cause of these codes is uh, a faulty fuel cap. So I actually, I don't want to lead you to believe that, oh, I'm just learning this on my own. Look at how smart I am figuring out the first time. Um, I've already checked this and I knew before I hit record that the fuel cap was actually installed loose. So it wasn't in place. It looked like it was because these caps, even after you tighten them, um, here, I'll just show you. It's tight. It still kind of wiggles. Like that's tight, but it still kind of wiggles. So when I first grabbed it, it was wiggly. But when I looked at it carefully, I think it was actually cross-threaded into the top of the filler neck. So anyway, if you have a loose fuel cap, which is no longer loose, it will set EVAP codes. So now that we have tightened the fuel cap, um, I'm going to... Uh, and I've, by the way, I've recorded these codes. Uh, I took a picture of them, so I'll have them for later. Um, we're going to clear the trouble codes. Actually, before we do that, let's look for live data. See if there's anything interesting there. And right on. So this is live data. I'm going to start the car, see what happens here. All right. So we see various statistics changing quite quickly. We have intake air temperature, ambient air temperature, the air pressure, coolant temperature, 40 degrees right there for coolant temperature, engine idle speed. I'll just give it a rev so that you can really see that it actually does, it does in fact reflect the, uh, the RPM. And uh, vehicle speed, of course we're stationary right now. Um, this is counting the run time of the engine in seconds. So a lot of cool stuff there. What's also interesting, throttle position sensor is reading zero, which is good because I'm not touching the throttle at the moment. So a lot of information here uh, about the system. And if I tighten the fuel cap and it does not, res and I clear the codes and the codes come back, then I'll be digging deeper into this kind of live data to use it to help me try and figure out what's going on there. I believe with this tool, you can close certain valves and pressurize a system and use that to try to diagnose hey you know is it a purge valve or is it some other kind of valve that's causing the problem uh, for now I'm just going to take the easy route and uh, and see if I can and I want to read the freeze frame data yeah it's nothing exciting there we've seen that all before special functions let's see what we've got here yeah nothing too exciting there Actuation test. Uh, earlier I was playing around in here. I can turn a fuel pump on and off and a few other things. Nothing uh, to, wow, lots of stuff. Control the fuel pump speed. Um, activate the vacuum pump. Bunch of, bunch of tools there. If, if the fuel cap replacement does not fix this problem, then I will be probing deeper. So for now, let's clear the trouble codes. Erase done. Engine and ECT is now normal. Oh, the check engine light went off. It used to be over here somewhere, it's gone. So I'll shut the vehicle off, take the key out, give it a start again. And with that fuel cap tight, I think we're in good shape. No DTCs. Let's go back in and do another automatic scan. Yeah, no DTCs for the engine. So that problem appears to be resolved. It's also possible that the computer in this car does a scan once you're driving. So in other words, after the engine has reached full operating temperature and you're driving down the highway, then it will do a pressure test, for example. So the check engine light could come back on. But in this case, where I saw the cap like not screwed on properly, I'm absolutely certain that was a contributing factor. And um, and so anyway, I just wanted to share with you that's one way of using the D7 tool to learn about your codes and resolve at least the loose gas cap problem or identify the loose gas cap problem. Good luck with your do-it-yourself projects. If you like my videos, please subscribe.